Hello, I'm Mix Miles and Mile Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a Hater 48 um, side drive I picked up as part of a job lot from my um, dealer over in Brighton. Um, the lawnmower came in as part of a job lot, as I say, and was really, really cheap as I picked up about five or six miles in one go. And this machine, if I can get it to, um, to do what it should do, then it should pay for all the machines that I purchased. Uh, I have had the machine running to a degree. Uh, it still wants a bit more work on my carburetor, but I have found out that the drive cable is actually defective. Um, it's actually got a snap down the bottom and the drive is, is trying to continually drive all the time. So if you've got a Hater 48 side drive, a Hater 41 or 56 side drive, and you need to have a new drive cable fitted, then this could be the video for you. If you like this sort of video, Miles Mower Man, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, and that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's get this Hater 48 side drive with a new drive cable fitted, and hopefully it'll all run as it should do. Okay, so Hater 48 now up on the bench. It does need a little tiny bit of carburetor work. There's a bit of a hunt, a bit of a hunt to it. I have drilled the jet out, but I think this machine has been sat up for a little while. Uh, it has um, been serviced by a company in Calfold before, which is not a million miles away from me. But um, so I would say, it's, 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 you know, it's, because it's a 48, I would say it's been used commercially to a degree, quite possibly. The wheels are not heavily used on the front. There's still a bit of tread left there. So I don't think it's been excessively used, but hey ho, it is what it is. Um, but we are, without a doubt, one of the best machines Hater have made. Now, some people will actually question me on that, and they say, oh, the Hater 48 Pros are much better than that and the other, but do you know what? The side drives have stood their test of time, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's, it's not up for debate. Um, so what I want to do, I need to, I need to disconnect, first of all, the the drive cable up the top end on the handle up here. So that's the first place we're gonna, we're gonna be going today. Be all the way up here. Let me move that light out of the way so you don't get no, uh, no reflection off of that light. Move it out of the way, touch. Um, so we're gonna be going up here first. Um, Cause I wanna remove the drive cable from, its, from all its assembly. Um, so it's not too hard to do. Just a, a pair of long nose pliers would be the first thing I'm gonna need. Cause I just wanna disconnect the uh, the drive cable itself, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me. So just remove the, uh, the little tiny clip there that goes on the drive cable at the back there. And then uh, I believe there's two screws, and normally is one, two, that hold the, uh, the cable in place and a 10 and a ten or 11 mil spanner. So I think it's a normally 11 mil on there. I'm probably prove me wrong and say it's something else. Uh, is that go on now or not? It's normally 11. There you go. So around the back here, let me bring you around. Right, so around the back here, uh, you, here, here's your drive cable, this one here, and it hooks onto here. Now, as you can see, this has all been charred up and what have you, that's not actually in place. Um, but the cable's actually broken down the bottom, which I'll show you in a very little short while. So just loosen this one off. And you want to set this around about at its, at its um, minimum when you put it back together, because you, you want to be able to adjust it fully for full stretch later. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just gonna undo this little tiny nut all the way. Now these cables are not the cheapest and normally I don't buy new cables, but because the outer armature is actually gone and Hater and Honda are the two machines, a lot of my companies in the UK, which use different cables compared to the rest. So unfortunately we're gonna to have to buy a new cable, which I have purchased already. So let's bring it around. <coughs> around over here. And then on a pair of, uh, a pair of snippers, I do need to have a tied up people because my my um, tools at the moment are leaving my toolbox quicker than people leaving Russia at the moment. So, uh, drive cables here, I've got a cable, couple of cable ties to remove. So we're gonna remove those. And get some new cable ties a bit later on. It goes through a cable feeding device here, which keeps all your cables intact. That's no drama, we can just remove that. In a minute. Like 
that. That's good. I mean, it works its way down the bottom down here. Let me bring you down. Boom. And here you can see that's actually where the cable is actually broken. It snapped just there. The cable, the cable itself is actually in good condition. So what I intend to do is I will keep this cable back because if I find another cable broken, I can always use these end pieces of the cable just find a new armature. That's the idea, okay? So um, on the end here will be a little tiny plastic um, connector, which you can only, only attack it from the inside. You can't get it from the outside, but what you can possibly do is just unscrew it, okay? And that would remove the, um, the plastic bit but unfortunately nine times out of ten you've got to tip the machine on its side to get that cable so let's do that let's tip the machine onto its side and then we'll inspect it to see how we can get this cable out okay now i will be removing certain parts of this mower you don't necessarily have to guys but i just want to make it make it more visible for you guys to see and also other people don't have the tools and bits and pieces just to get in there quickly and do it but the cable is right up inside here and you can't actually physically see that so hence we wanted to remove some bits and bobs. So I'm gonna remove some of these um, bolts here now. And you have to go a bit gentle, okay? Now I'm using an impact, you don't have to, but you just have to go a bit easy because if you go too hard with it, then these little tiny bolts, they will just shear off on you, trust me. Ask me how I know. If you go too hard, they just shear off. So I'm removing one bolt here, one bolt here, okay? And then there'll be one other one here somewhere. Just there. I think that's that one. That's a bit smaller, that one. Yeah, that one's a touch smaller. We'll try, we'll try an eight on there. Let's see what an eight does. I had that eight out today, didn't I? I already had my eight millimeter out because I was doing that hedge trimmer. This is a problem I, I have when I, I'm working away, busy, busy, busy. I, I have all my tools absolutely everywhere and can never find nothing when I need it. Uh, that's a 13, 10s, that'd be about an eight mil there then. That's a big screw. Now, that should, to a degree, separate. It won't be easy, because it's been, it's been in there a little while, so it will be hanging on to its, uh, to its secrets. And this is absolutely full of grass up in here too. You can see it start to loosen up. It's just sat in, it's just been sat in there for years. It's caught up in here. They just wants a bit of teasing. Now, I've got to go careful because I don't want to break any of this. If you break it, then you've got to buy a new, a new cowling. And that's not the idea of a game. So, a bit of cleaning, a bit of wiggling, to and froing. And it will start to release its secrets. But it's caught up just in this little tiny groove here. That's where it'd be caught. And because it's been rubbing over the years, there it goes. They don't like to give all their secrets up. But as you can see, it's full up with stuff in here. This is just sliding out. There it goes. So that's full up wood louses and all sorts in there. So a bit of a clean up. And here's our belt. And down in here, let me bring you right in so you can see, because there's no point in doing the video. Right, I've got you zoomed in about as far as I can get you. Now, because we disconnected the cable the other side, we're going to pull this cable through and that will then disconnect off of here. Now there's three holes on here, let me show you. There's three holes on here that you can, you can adjust, and most people just go for uh, the middle hole, which is what I will do, but you can just go for the first hole, um, which, will be, which will be the top one. And then as the cable stretches over time, you can then move it down to the middle one and then to the end one to give you a bit more uh, tension on that cable. So with, with that cable now disconnected, we've now got to remove a cable from, from the, right at the very top here, okay, and this is where, this is, one of the easiest ones to remove because you can actually get a pair of pliers straight onto it at the top here. But I'm going to try and bring you in for a bit of a bird's eye view in here. Let me bring you right in. So your cable actually, if I can get my hand in the back there, Mick, I can. Your cable is actually just up here. See there where my finger is wiggling? That's where your cable is just there. Okay, and all you've got to do is get a pair of long nose pliers and just pinch the two arrows of that cable together and it will remove. Right, cable now removed, and the reason I couldn't get on it is one of them, one of them was, was bent up, look, see? But normally my cable tool that Brandon sent me, you put over top like that, and you just slide it down over top, and then that, it just releases a cable. So they're, they're a good tool, they are. I like it a lot, but uh, today it was a pair of long nose pliers. So that's that cable now gone. Now I won't throw that cable away, because as I say, I can still use the bits and pieces off of it for another hater. Now what I'm looking for is my new hater cable 
which I had around about 10 minutes ago. And now I cannot find it. It was in my hand. It was in my hand and I moved, didn't I? I moved somewhere and now it's not in my hand no more. Hmm. Let me locate my new cable. I don't know where it's gone. I'm losing the will to live today, people. Right, I found the cable. So this cable, let me try and find it's got a part number on it. This is for the Hater 48, and there is a Pacific model which your lawnmower will have. So they do differ slightly, so make sure you get the right model. And I'll show you where to find the model of your lawnmower very, very shortly. So this cable, uh, how much was it? It was £18.5p total. I got it from... Um, Genuine hate a clutch drive cable for a uh, 480, 481, 485, 486, 488 uh, US 61. And the item number is 3344856090644. Um, I don't know who I bought it off from now. Uh, they're a company up in Northumberland I got them from. So here's the new cable. It says genuine, which is good. So all we've got to do on this one is very simply undo the cable and then this end, which is your arrow end, okay? That end's got to go over the back of the machine, <coughs> through the hole, and in the other side. So just locate the hole where the old cable came out from, which is gonna be around about here, right up in here. Pull the cable through, and then just push the arrow heads through, that boom, that's gone in. So that's locked, <coughs> and then just bring your cable all the way down and hook it up onto the bracket just like so, okay? And there you go. So that, that's the new cable now in place, already done. Now what we can do is we can have a quick little clean up inside here. Now's a good chance to change your belt if your belt needs to be done as well, but my belt doesn't, my belt is fine. But now you can get the belt off because you can slip these belts quite easy on these. Um, so it needs to change your belt or if your height, height rod broke, this is how you'd access it as well, but I'm divulging away from uh, the rest of the video. So that's all now in place, we're happy with that. Um, and now what we've got to do is put this cover back on. I'll give that a bit of a clean and just re-screw that back onto the 138 bolt here, 138 bolt here, and the big screw here. And make sure it feeds into this clip here as well and up here, up there, clean that out. And then that, that'd be the cowling all back in place. I think I've got a brand new blade for this too, so I might put a brand new blade on it as well. Now's a good chance also to sharpen your blade as well if required to do so as well. So let's get that done. And when you come back, I'll be back up on top with the lawnmower back on its wheels and roller and ready to fit the other end. Okay, with the lawnmower now back on its uh, on its wheels again, we can now, I've got to thread this, uh, there's a little tiny metal cable here somewhere for this, uh, for this cable to be fed through. I'll we'll find out where that is. It's fallen off somewhere. I'll find it. Um, so now, what we've got to do is now hook this cable up here. Boom. Make sure that's all fitted. Then bring this cable down, put it through this little tiny slot. You want one of them nuts the other side, Mick, obviously. Push it up. Do that one up very slightly. Right, now, this is the important bit because this is a brand spanking new cable, okay? So what we're gonna do is just, just roughly find the tension on it, and all we've got to do that is by, by, by pulling this back, uh, providing tension onto there. It's gonna be about there. But that is roughly at the, at the absolute maximum that you can run that cable at, okay? So it wants to be about there, I'd say. That's where that cable is gonna be about right to engage that drive, okay? But I know that to be incorrect because this is a brand new cable. As this cable stretches, it's gonna to wanna to move. So what you wanna do is there is, just inside here, there's a little tiny Phillips screw just inside here. <clears throat> and all I'm gonna do is grab a Phillips screwdriver and I'm then gonna adjust um, that cable back. So up inside here, let me try and bring you in so you can see a bit better. That might be a bit easier for you. Cause you wanna obviously see what's going on. Cause these would have been adjusted uh, quite a few times already. So up inside here is a Phillips screw. I'm just gonna undo that screw. You might have to remove a cable to do it. We don't wanna break our brand spanking new cable, do we? Let's just remove that for now. And here is a screw up here, you see? We're gonna loosen that one off. Now all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that screw out and I'm just gonna drop this bracket down towards a mower, which will give me even more tension. Sorry if my head's in the way, but I need to see what I'm doing. So there's a hole. So I'm now gonna bring this down to the second hole. 
put that back in. So there's lots of adjustment to be had on these. And by moving that down, you're actually increasing the amount of cable throw you have. So screw that on back in. Now remember, when we last had it on there, it was right at the top, right up here, okay? But now, you pull that in, that's gonna be really tight there, man. Boom. So now, when we adjust that cable out, about halfway, put that nut on there. So now we're already about halfway. So now we have adjustment. Plenty of, plenty of uh, drive on that cable there to pull it. So as the cable stretches over time, we can, all you've got to do now is just loosen this top, this top nut off. Loosen that one off, like so, to about four or five threads. Pull that down and do the one up behind it. And that's how you adjust your cable to, to make it work. So that, that, that now will be, will be even tighter, but we don't need it that tight just yet, because it's a brand new cable. So we'll go back to half to where we were. About halfway. Put that on. So about halfway. Got a bit of drive there. We'll see how much that is. If it's too slack, then we we'll come back and just tight, just just adjust this. But that's about there. Got to tighten my cables up. Make sure they're, they're not kinked. And we'll go outside. Go for a fire up. It's, it doesn't want a bit of carburetor work yet. But hopefully now we've now fixed this drive because the drive was always engaging and uh, it was it was never um, it was always trying to self propel. So hopefully we might have fixed that. Right. So. Hopefully it's fixed. As I say, it does want a bit of carburetor work. There's still a bit of hunting and surging to do yet, but I've not done the air filter yet or nothing. So, um, I'm sure there's still fuel in here because it's been tipped up. Yeah, they may not want to start either because it's been tipped up on its side. So, we'll see. But all I want to do is I want my drive to work. That's all I'm after. So, let's uh, let's choke it. I'm not hearing it click on the choke either. I might want a bit of carburetor tuning. That's because it's been tipped up. It will go. It's been tipped. They don't like it. Call me a liar. Let me take the plug out. Because as I say, it's just been tipped up. <clears throat> Find a socket for that. I'll take a bit of carb spray with me as well, just get a little bit more light. So I want a bit of carburetor work doing to it. I have had it running. Might be a bit of oil in the old cylinder. I'll put a brand new plug in it. Oily, oily. This is a little bit of a jump start. Once we get the old drive running, I can then look at, look at the carby. Let's try that. Oh, it really doesn't want to work. Hmm. Okay, so call me a liar. Let me grab a, is that an eight mil on there, Mick? I don't think I've lost spark. <clears throat> so this is one of my videos alive, people, see? I don't always just make this stuff up. A machine that was running, no, I don't want to know. Let me grab a Phillips, a flathead, and we'll uh, put a bit of spray down the old head on that. Just to help it along on its merry way. It's a bit of an overkill screwdriver, Mick, but that'll do. I might have lost spark, maybe the cores was packed up. I don't know. It was all working, we should see in a bit. What's the airfield look like? A bit dirty. Uh, on to choke. Yeah, that's not that's not even fully choking. That's not even fully choking Mickey Mouse. That'd be why. So let me just reset this this choke. When you choke it, it's not actually choking the machine. It's not fully choking the machine. 
So a quick little emergency pit stop. Let me find a little flip screw. I'll take this, take this cover off. It's only choking to about a quarter of what it should be. Which is nowhere near enough, right? These machines like the old choke. So I'm just gonna adjust for choke. So I'm gonna remove two screws up the top here, which will take the front top cowling off. Like so, and then there's a little tiny screw on the front of the uh, cable here. It's got to loosen that off. There you go. Loosen that. Set to choke, which would be all the way forward as far as it would go. It's got to move this cable. It goes. Oh, what's that doing? That's choking now. So all the way as far as it would go. So that is running the wrong way. There you go. There you go. That's choke. That's choking now. Let's do that back up. I'll just push the cable forward. Is all I've done. So it wasn't choking, I don't believe. Ooh. Right, let's have a look now. Off choke. It's still not choking all the way. It wants to go just a touch more. And someone's been uh, been playing. Yeah. It's choking to a degree though. It's not it's not 100 percent It just wants a little bit more fine-tuned, but they do that with these haters. The old panels wear out on them. Ooh. Have I lost spark? If I've lost spark, then I can't really show you it working. Oh, so I've lost spark. Is what I would say. Or that's not clearing that switch. Ah, that's what it is. It's not clearing that switch. So if I pull that in, I bet that'll start now. If I pull that in there, I bet that'll start. I think the smart switch wants a bit of adjustment too. Yeah. So it's Marcus Switch wants, wants working on. If I can do that. Oh. Look at that. So there you go, micro switch needs a bit of work. Um, I could just adjust the cable this end on the machine just so it clears the micro switch on the, uh, on the machine. If you wanna see a video of um, how to make that work, then uh, let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a video on how to um, make sure your micro switch is clearing. And I'll do a separate video for that, but there you go. The drive all now works, happy as Larry. Okay, so there you have it. One hater full check now all up and running. I've got to sort of the micro switch out. What is happening is as you're putting the dead man's handling, it's just not quite clearing it. Um, I didn't think I'd had a, a faulty coil on there, but I just got to adjust the cable, maybe just adjust the micro switch a bit more and that will then start first time every time. And that might be why the person that originally threw it away is because the machine was starting to fail, as in starting wise, because the micro switch is just slightly out of adjustment. One simple tweak on the cable or a bit of a bending on the micro switch will clear all those problems, no issues at all. As I say, if you want to see a little video on how to do that, then leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do a little tiny video on how to do that and your lawnmower could be up and running in no time at all. But there's a quick little video for you. Hate a 48, 41, 56 side drive, how to install the drive cable, how to adjust it properly, and before long, you'll be driving along on the lawn, cutting those nice stripes as you should do. If I saw a video of Mixed Mows and Mower Man, hit the off subscribe button and whack the old bell. Send notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mows very, very soon, but until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.